The rail project HS2 has been controversial almost from the start. First, the Labour government and now the coalition has argued that it will provide value for money. But given the increase in spending on the project, is that still the case? Stephen Glaister is a transport economist and director of the RAC Foundation. There's a very simple point here that whatever you think the objectives are for a big scheme like HS2, if the costs of delivering those benefits go up, then the value for money go down in proportion. The announcement yesterday of a substantial increase in expected costs necessarily means that the value for money will have gone down, as it were, pound for pound with that increase in costs. What were the proportions uh, that the government was working on? In other words, the sort of between the cost and the added value? The latest estimate, which uh, is discussed in a recent National Audit Office report on this, was for the what they call the Y shape. That's the full high speed rail scheme from London up to Leeds and Manchester. Uh, The benefits were about twice the costs. And that's doing doing it on the same uh, basis as the government does evaluations of road schemes and other public expenditure. So if the uh, costs are now thought to have gone up by uh, another 25%, then that two-to-one ratio will itself have fallen by uh, 25%. It points up, that the question is, uh, if you've got uh, what is now going to be over £50 billion to spend on something for particular objectives like helping uh, uh, the cities of the north or speeding up rail journeys, adding more capacity, could you not achieve those same objectives much more cheaply by spending part of that 50 billion um, on these other alternatives and having some money left over for other purposes. Just in looking back at that NA report, they were mentioning the government talking about a sort of ratio between of one to 1.4. So that yet, the one, you know, you, that was the, the point four was the added value. And so. That figure relates to London to Birmingham alone. But the cost increase that was announced yesterday is for the, the full scheme, when we're talking about the full £50 billion. And, as and I that's said, where you get the two-to-one. That's where you get the two-to-one, yeah, because understood. the benefits of, of the whole scheme are proportionately somewhat higher. Well, last night, the Conservative MP, Cheryl Gillan, who was in the Cabinet until last autumn and whose Buckinghamshire constituency is on the route, led an unsuccessful attempt to derail HS2. She's at Westminster now. Miss Gillan, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, are you reassured... Uh, when you hear Lord Dighton that this project has now reached the upper limit of its costs? No, I'm not, um, because quite frankly, when you read the small print, even on the numbers that have been produced so far, it says in brackets at 2011 prices. And well, last time I looked, it was 2013. So I presume those prices have gone up. So has the overall spending envelope that will be required if this project goes ahead. I think Lord Dighton is is still on a rescue mission and I I think HS2 may not recover like our economy because you're quite right, the criticisms in the National Audit Office report are pretty fundamental, not just on the strategic case which hasn't been made and the limited evidence of, of where and how much increase in capacity is needed on the railways that the government cites, but also because the timetable has no contingency. And we heard yesterday uh, that uh, the environmental statement alone for the hybrid bill, which is supposed to be deposited by the end of the year, is some 50,000 pages. And uh, unrealistic timetables in the Department of Transport have caused problems, for example, on the West Coast mainline franchising process. Uh, The practical questions are obviously hugely important, but um, in terms of the politics, the government is committed to this. This project is going to happen whether there's a a Liberal Democrat Conservative coalition or a a Labour Liberal Democrat coalition or even, imagine such a thing, a Labour Conservative coalition. I mean, wouldn't your energies be better spent trying to improve the project rather than trying to stop it? I think that uh, you make a mistake in thinking that my energies are only directed towards pointing out the the, the faults of of this uh, particular scheme because I've also been working very closely that if it goes ahead that we have the best possible mitigation in Buckinghamshire which after all gets absolutely no benefit whatsoever, all the pain and no gain from this project. Um, That's of course one reason that costs might have gone up. Absolutely, but I mean why would we designate uh, the Chilterns an area of outstanding natural beauty and then not, not try to protect it? Uh, for future generations, but also on the compensation schemes. Some compensation has been paid out already, um, but it's woefully inadequate. And uh, at least the government said last night they were going to look at the property bond, which a lot of my constituents are keen on. 
But quite frankly, if we are going to do this project, we must compensate people rapidly and fairly. These are lives and homes and businesses that have been under this threat now for four years. You accept it might happen. Uh, Do you therefore accept that if it goes ahead, uh, you have to ultimately go with it? Realistically, I have to accept that it might happen, but there's still a long way to go. We're not talking about putting a shovel in the ground until 2017. We're not talking about completion for this project for another 25, 30 years. And quite frankly, I think that there needs to be a lot more detailed work and justification before the final green light, leave alone the hybrid bill, but before the final green light is given. And can I just say that to Briefly, go ahead, yes, to go ahead with this scheme, which doesn't connect into HS1 or into a, a, a main airport in the southeast, when we we should be looking at our aviation capacity, is just quite frankly putting the cart before the horse. We should look at what other options are there are, and we should look if we're going ahead with it at getting the best connectivity. Cheryl Gillen, MP for Cheshire and Amish, and thank you. We're listening to that Chief Executive of HS2 Limited, Alison Munro. Welcome, Alison Munro. Can you just explain for us why the money has gone up? Because there was, what, £14 billion put aside for contingencies now, but there was contingencies in the original budget. Yes. Yeah, so as, uh, as Lord Dighton has already explained, what the Chancellor has agreed in the spending round is an indicative budget now, which uh, allows an appropriate uh, level of contingency so that we can be sure going forward that there is enough funding there for high speed too. Um, Previously, what we had was a cost estimate, not a budget. And we had not allowed within that as much contingency because we were going to try to present what we thought the cost of the project would be. Now, we don't expect um, to use all of the contingency, but the budget needs to be there so that we've got that certainty that we can move forward. Given you've got that certainty, uh, do you accept what Danny Alexander said, that you must deliver within this upper figure and that there is going to be no more money and you can't come back and ask for any more money? Uh, Absolutely. In fact, we have been set a target. If we take phase one, the London to Birmingham phase, um, the indicative amount that the Chancellor um, has agreed is is 21.4 billion. But we in High Speed 2 Limited are being set a target of 17 0.16 0.16 billion. That is the target which we are being given. So the aim is not to spend um, the, the full budget. The aim is very much that we control costs very tightly and we come in well below that budget. And will the shovels, first shovels be, uh, as it were, dug into the turf in 2017-18? Um, that, is, uh, that is our current plan. We are on Could course. Could it slip? Uh, well, we have to obviously see um, how the parliamentary process goes, but our current and target... And of course legal challenges. Uh, well, the, the legal challenges, we are we are um, carrying on with the project. They're not actually delaying the project. So we are proceeding to be ready to deposit the bill uh, by the end of the year. We've met all of our targets to date. So, for example, we said we would publish a draft of our environmental statement okay. by spring this year, which we have done. So we are on course at the moment to hit our targets. And you know, if all goes to plan, we'll be starting construction in 2017. Alison Munro of HS2. Thank you very much.